knock knock. Yeah. I'm Miss Bo. Mm -hmm. I'm Brad Faulkner. I'm PE student. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be giving, giving your abdominal exam, so I'm going to wash my hands first and we'll get started. Okay, can you tell me your full name? I'm Jane Doe. And your date of birth? January 15, 1994. Okay, I'm make sure your stuff matches up with mine, and it does. Okay, so like I said, I'll be giving your abdominal exam, so I'm going to have you lay supine for me. I'm going to pull the leg rest out for you. I'll get you a pillow for your head. Make sure you're comfortable. There you go. Have your arms lay at your side. Um, I'm going to be staying at the patient's right hand side. Now, before I start this, do you need to use the bathroom? I would like to give time to have the patient empty the bladder. Uh, I'm going to drip the patient from the uh, zyphoid process up and the pubic symphysis down. So I'll, I'd like to have good lighting for this exam. I'm going to warm my stethoscope for the patient to make sure it's not cold on the, on the skin. I'm at the right hand side. Uh, so to start, I'm going to inspect the abdomen. I'm going to take note of all four quadrants, the right upper, left upper, right lower, and left lower. Um, I'm going to first inspect the skin for any, um, any scars, any bruising, any varicose veins, um, any obvious masses that I could see. Um, then I'm going to inspect the contour of the stomach to, to see if it's flat or rounded or protuberant. Um, I would look for any pulsatile masses. Um, this could be a sign of an aneurysm. Um, some masses. Yeah, I think it's it. So then I'm going to um, inspect, no, I'm going to auscultate first. So I'll, I'll do this first because if you palpate or percuss first, it could cause abnormal uh, bowel sounds. So I'm going to first auscultate using the diaphragm of my stethoscope in the right lower quadrant. Uh, next, I'm going to auscultate in the four key um, arteries, so the aortic, renal, iliac, and femoral. I'm listening for any, uh, any breweries. Um, next, I'm going to listen over the liver and the, uh, the spleen and listen for any friction rub. And I've heard it, if I heard a friction rub in this area, it could be um, either gonococcal infection or um, pancreatic cancer or hepatoma. So next, I'm going to uh, go into percussion. So you, I percuss in all four quadrants of the stomach, and I'm assessing for um, air fluid levels or any masses. Um, <clears throat> and I do this because percussion guides palpation. So if I percuss an area of dullness that shouldn't be there, I can palpate to see what it is. Next, I'm going to uh, percuss the area just uh, just below the or just above the lowest cost of, or the lowest um, costal margin on the right hand side, and this area should be dull because of the liver. And then the left hand side will be um, tympanic because of um, a gas bubble. Um, next, I'm going to go on to palpation. So, um, you palpate using light palpation first. You uh, keep your hand and forearm at a horizontal level above the skin and palpate in all four quadrants. You, um, when you go from area to area, you, um, you raise your hand above the skin in each spot. And if I need to, I'll do deep palpation. So in that, you'd use both hands and push deeper to, if you need to delineate any masses. So I'll just give an example. 
Okay, so after that, I'm going, on, going, I'm going to go on to assess the liver. So um, to do this, I'm going to uh, percuss from the umbilical area up to uh, inside your donus. So then I'm going to go on to uh, go from the nipple area down into your donuts again. So the area in between the two spots should be about 6 to 12 centimeters. Um, after that, I'm going to assess for tenderness of this area. So to do this, I'm going to put my left hand on um, just above the area of the liver and strike it with my right fist. And you tell me if this hurts, okay? So to compare, I'm going to do the left side. Nothing? Okay, good. So next, I'm going to try to uh, palpate the liver. So to do this, I'm going to put my left hand just to, um, just behind the back of the patient, right at the level of uh, rib 11 and 12, and push up on the rib cage, and use my right hand, go just under the lowest costal margin, and push in and up, and take a deep breath for me. And I'm trying to feel the lowest border of the liver. And this, if it could be felt, would be about um, three centimeters below the lowest costal margin. Um, so next, I'm going to go on to this, um, this spleen. So um, the spleen, if it enlarges, it will grow um, anteriorly, down, and medially. And it can cause areas that would be tympanic to be um, dull, like the stomach or the colon. Um, so to percuss this area, you um, start at the level, the level of cardiac dullness, just at the sixth intercostal space and you percuss towards the anterior axillary line and down until it becomes tympanic and this known as trop space. Right there. So <clears throat> to, uh, to uh, percuss the, um, the spleen, I'm gonna have you take a deep breath as I percuss and I'm gonna make sure that it stays tympanic the entire way through. And I'm doing this right at the lowest uh, costal margin. So go ahead and breathe in for me. and stay tympanic the entire way through. So next I'm gonna to try to um, palpate the spleen. So to do this, uh, take my left hand, I'm gonna reach behind the patient on the left side and push up on, um, on the ribs and then take my right hand and push in to try to feel the tail of the, the spleen. And you breathe in for me. Um, next, I'm going to try to uh, palpate the bladder. So, for, uh, so the bladder normally lies just above the pubic symphysis, and that was where I would start uh, palpation. Um, when you percuss the bladder, um, if it becomes dull, it would take about four to 600 cc's for the, that area to become dull. And if the bladder is distended, it would feel um, soft and round. So I'm gonna pal uh, palpate for any tender areas, okay? Next, I'm going to percuss the bladder. I'm doing this to assess if the bladder is distended or not. Um, next, I'm going to go into the kidneys. So the kidneys are normally not palpable, uh, and they are retroperitoneal. So um, to do this first, I'm going to first try to palpate the kidney, um, if I can. Um, so I'm going to stand on, on your left-hand side, and use my right hand and place just under the costal vertebral angle of the patient and push up, and with my left hand, go just on the left upper border and push in to try to palpate the kidney with my right hand. Okay. And then the same thing on the right hand side, just switch hands. So left hand under the patient, push up, right hand push down the right upper quadrant. Okay. Uh, next, I'm going to try to percuss the kidney to see if there's any tenderness. So I'm gonna have you sit up for me. And then at the uh, costal vertebral angle, I'm gonna put my uh, left hand over the area and strike with my right fist. Anything? And then same thing. Anything? Good. Lay back for me. So next, I'm going to try to palpate the aorta. So this normally would be felt uh, just left of the midline of the patient. Uh, so palpate down. And the area in between palpation should be between about three centimeters. Uh, next, I'm going to check for um, ascites. 
So the first thing I'm gonna do is to check and see if I see any um, shipping donuts. So to do this, I'm gonna uh, put our percuss on the patient's uh, abdomen and go move in a laterally direction. Now I'm gonna have you roll to the left. Now this area should be, uh, if there was a society, this would be more tympanic because the air level would rise to the top and dull would go to the bottom. Uh, the next test is uh, fluid wave. So I'm gonna have you uh, place your hands just on your midline and I'm going to strike one side and see if I feel any impulse on the other side. Okay. Uh, so the next test is uh, for appendicitis. So uh, the first one is rebound tenderness. So I'm gonna <coughs> press on your uh, McBurney's point and I'm gonna push in, and when I let go, you tell me if it hurts. Anything? Good. Uh, next one is, is a Rothstein sign. So I'm gonna press on the patient's left lower border, or left lower quadrant, to produce pain on the right lower quadrant. Anything? Good. Uh, next is psoas sign. So I'm going to uh, apply resistance to your knee. I want you to try to raise your knee up towards your chest. Good. Uh, the next one is the operator sign. So I'm gonna have you flex your knee and then internally rotate. And this would cause pain in the hypogastric region. Uh, next, I'm gonna check for cholecystitis in your gallbladder. So this is called Murphy's sign. Um, I'm going to apply pressure just under the lowest costal margin. I have to take a deep breath in for me. Good. Now if the pain was so bad that you stopped breathing, then that would be positive for Murphy's test. Um, so the next test, I'm going to look for any ventral hernias. So I'm going to have you raise your head and shoulders forward to see if it produces any masses, and it doesn't. Um, now the, these masses, uh, if they were in the wall, would be um, in the abdominal wall, and they would be excluding inguinal hernias. Uh, the next one is an intra-abdominal mass. So I want you to, uh, to flex your abs for me. And if a mass was there and it went away because of muscle contraction, then there would be an intra-abdominal mass. So do you have any questions? Yeah, what if you, when you hit my back, if it would have been tender, what could that mean? That could be a sign of polynephritis or maybe a um, musculoskeletal problem. Okay. That's it though, do you have, any, um, do you have anything else? Okay, well that's, that's the end of the exam. If you have any questions, just let me know. All right. Thank you.